One of the hottest segments right now is the mid-sized truck market. This is the 2022 Nissan Frontier. It competes head to head with Tacoma, Ranger, and of course the Chevy Colorado and others. But this vehicle is all new, both inside and out, and Nissan has really impressed us. So we took it on road and off road, and you're gonna go for a ride. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. This is the 2022 Nissan Frontier, the Pro 4X trim level. Now there's also an SV trim level that is more about luxury and still a lot of great usability. But if you're gonna test a vehicle like this, you go with the top trim level. So we have for you the Pro 4X, which is improved both inside and out, new driveline, lots of changes, including technology. So we're gonna take it on road and we're gonna take it off road and we're gonna see how it performs against the leader in this segment, which is currently the Toyota Tacoma. And that's what Nissan wants to do going head to head with them. We're gonna cover 10 different categories so that you go in to buy this vehicle, you'll know what you want because a salesperson's job is to sell you on the vehicle. We're gonna cover performance, handling, safety, visibility, seating, technology, features. We'll talk about the all new design, quality, cargo space and the different combinations. And we'll talk about value and how it compares to the competitors. And in the end, we will give you a car coach reports total. Down below is a list of all the competitors and links to those reviews. Some of these vehicles that are competitive to this include the Gladiator. So this is a really competitive set right now. Let's start off with under the hood. Under the hood of all Nissan Frontiers is a 3.8 liter V6 direct injected engine with 310 horsepower and 281 pound feet of torque. Backed up by a nine speed automatic transmission and it has some pretty impressive towing capacity and we'll talk about that in the drive. Let's start off with the performance of this vehicle. Now this is one engine for all of the new Frontiers. It's a 3.8 liter engine with 310 horsepower. Going up some steep hills here in Utah, we're heading out to Park City from Sundance. So does really well, certainly better than the previous generation. As far as the torque, it's got 281 pound feet of torque. So it gives it pretty good get up and go. As far as horsepower, it's leading in the class of all the competitors that are listed down below. But I still think it could use a little bit more. Maybe it's the weight of the truck or the size of the truck, but it just needs, I think it needs that little touch more because it's good. It's certainly better than what we had before in the previous generation. Now the towing capacity has also increased for this vehicle. It's at 6,720 pounds. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to use that class three hitch, which is an available option. One thing that is standard on the Frontiers, all of them is standard trailer sway. There is nothing worse than having the trailer start wagging. It's very dangerous, not just to you, but the people around you. And Frontier has decided to make this a standard feature. Payload's around 1,900 pounds for the bed capacity. Again, there is a short bed and a long bed. We'll cover that in design because there's some interesting combinations with the king cab and the crew cab, depending upon which combination works for you, long bed and short bed. But the performance in this is really good. Fuel economy is combined at 20 miles to the gallon. One last thing, the transmission comes automatic only and it is a nine speed automatic transmission. Overall, when you're looking at the performance of this vehicle, especially on the street, it's gonna be different off-road. We're gonna cover that in handling because it's sort of its own little package. So we'll talk about on-road handling. But when you're looking at performance on the road for everyday driving, for using this as a work truck, it earns a nine. On the road, it is much quieter inside this car, although you just heard me accelerating up a pretty steep hill, but I am doing like 75 miles an hour. But as far as the ride and the road noise, much quieter. From the engine, much quieter. And that's important, so you can have a conversation inside the vehicle or, or not have to worry about being on an earpiece, so you can use some of the technology which we'll cover coming up. The steering is very heavy on this vehicle, and that, that's the one thing I noticed as you go faster, obviously it's a little easier, but in slow maneuvers, like maybe trying to do a three-point turn or in going into a parking spot, note that this is a pretty heavy steering wheel. You just have to get used to it like anything else. If you like the heavy steering wheel, you're going to love the new Frontier. If you're not a fan of it, make sure to test drive this and the competitors so you can see which one meets your needs. There is a lot of competitors in this category. Many of them have variable steering racks. This was designed and set up to be used for off-road, for on-road, for everyday driving, no matter what it was, and it would fit into your garage. And we'll cover a lot of that detail when we cover design. 
So for on-road, we're seeing some massive improvements and I think this is really good. Uh, again, we're on some pretty hilly country and I think it does perform much better than its predecessor. So if you've owned a Frontier in the past, don't put your nose up at this one. You must take it for a test drive if you can get one. With the chip shortage, these are super popular, high demand. And if you're watching this as a new review, uh, you'll find that these vehicles will be in late 2021. But you might get some in earlier, but they are going like hotcakes. Let's take this off-road and we'll see how it does. So we're doing some off-roading here in the Utah mountains. And we're looking at the total capability of the handling of the new Frontier. Roads are pretty rut. This is good. If you're going to go after the Tacoma market, you have to perform at that level. Because remember, you're also looking at Gladiator in this marketplace. So when you purchase the SV, you're looking at a vehicle that is capable off-road. When you're looking at the Pro 4X or the Pro level, which is the new level, this is the top of the line, the Pro 4X on this really rough road, as you can see. We've got you some drone footage also that we created ourselves. We wanted you to see its full capabilities. And it actually does a really good job absorbing some of this rough road, because typically when you're off-roading at any speed, it is a rough ride. Well, this is absorbing some of that. There's Bilstein shocks that are on the Pro 4X because this is a fully loaded vehicle. It's got all the options. It also has skid plates and has the highest approach angle in the category. This vehicle is really capable, extremely impressive. And when they redid the Frontier, they thought about who's using this. We're gonna do some rock climbing, some off-roading, really using this vehicle the way it's designed to be used. And I think that's one of the things that people are looking at. You know, looking at the Colorado, you're looking at the Ranger, and it's got just the right amount of performance. This is where performance is well matched with the suspension. Because obviously you don't want performance as far as power. You need torque, which this vehicle has, and you need off-road capability, which we are experiencing right now. Pretty impressive stuff. When it comes to handling for this Frontier, it definitely earns a 10. I'm going to continue off-roading and show you some of the footage that we experienced. Standard on all Frontiers is the Nissan Safety Shield 360, and that features a lot of standard safety features that people want, including rear emergency braking, pedestrian detection, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, which is really important in a pickup truck. You've got your alert uh, for automatic lane departure warning, high beam assist, and the class exclusive rear automatic braking. There's a lot of features and you can turn them on and off right here on the center screen. In addition, you go two steps over, you've got your driver assistance systems here and that allows you to make some of the changes that you want from lane departure, blind spot, emergency braking, your traffic sign alert, which is not really a safety, but it's good to know so you don't speed, your driver attention, and all of your other parking aids. And those are really nice to have that you can adjust what works for you. If you pay a lot of attention to the roadway, that's great. If you tend to be somebody who's not, well, then this is probably a good system for everyone. There are some additional features that are part of the safety that are optional and I kind of wish were standard and that's the intelligent cruise control, the class exclusive tra traffic sign recognition which you've seen here and the intelligent driver alertness and rear sensor. Those are optional and they're part of that $990 package but overall I wish it was all included it would have earned a 10 but because it is an option it earns a 9. When you're looking at visibility, it's 80% of your driving decisions, so it's important that you can see where you're going, and that's kind of a duh obvious. But looking out the front, you have this big, muscular new front hood. So you can adjust the seat however you need to. There's a good sized piece of glass, and you can see the roadway. They've done a nice job in designing that so you can actually see what you're looking at. Now, as far as looking out the sides, the sills are a nice height. They kind of slope upward which is good so if you're in the back seat you can still see out especially if you have child safety seats back there and as far as looking out the back you're seeing those three windows which is typical of most pickup trucks but this has a, a movable rear window as well the best thing about the visibility for this vehicle is if you are not good at parking because it could be a long bed with a crew cab it's important to note there is an around view camera it is one of the best on the market it's called an intelligent around view camera and it's a bird's eye view one thing i did want to mention though is in reverse 
this backup camera is a little bit on the grainy side and I wish it was just a little crisper. The center screen is improved. We'll talk about that in technology next, but I, I wanted to at least give you those details. And when it comes to visibility, it earns a nine. When you're looking at the seating for the Frontier, it's improved. It's the Nissan Zero Gravity seats. That means there's no lumbar support. The seats are designed so that you don't need it. That's a matter of opinion. I think it's needed or at least adjustable. The seats aren't too bad, actually. You're sitting on the seat. You're not sitting within the seat. So if you're looking for more of a truck type ride, and it depends how you're built as well, this might be the perfect seat for you. It does absorb a lot of the cushioning. I'm on a very rough road right now that's got a lot of expansion joints. So that's what you're, you're seeing a little bit of movement or hearing a little bit of movement. Passenger seat is exactly the same, which I do appreciate. The seats come in cloth on the main levels. And once you hit the SV level, leather is optional. There are trim levels that you can get that are cloth as well. It depends what you're looking for and what you're doing with it. The leather is more comfortable, but if it's really, really hot out and you're typically sitting on the seat in a pair of shorts, cloth might be the answer for you. So it's important that you sit in all the seats. So for the front row, you have something that a lot of the other brands don't have. You've got two stage heated seats and a heated steering wheel, which is necessary in most areas of this country. Let's take a look at the second row. We'll look at the storage back there as well, and then we'll give it a rating. Heading into the second row, you've got two pockets, one behind each seat, as well as three different styles of charge ports, USB, USB-C, and your standard 12 volt outlet, which is a wall outlet, which I think is great to have. In the center, you've got a cup holder, which is really nice, and the seats fold 60-40. In the doors, you have a little bit of storage here and here, and of course, one of those Fender audio speakers. There are two ways to fold down the rear seat. You can lift up this lever, put the back down in case you need some flat storage here. And then in addition, you've got this lever, which allows you to put the seat all the way up and gives you more space and additional storage for your adventure kit. They have the adventure medic kit here, as well as the Nissan backpack, which has additional goodies inside. Overall, when you're looking at seating for this vehicle, it earns a seven. When you're looking at technology, this nine inch center screen is all new. There is corded Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, not wireless, although I don't think anyone in the category has it that way. Uh, new is also your center stack with the seven inch advanced driver assistance screen that is right in front of you. One of the things I really like is this backup camera. It's in a round view. Again, it's not as crystal clear as I would like it to be, but you can see all the way around you so you don't back up over something. And this is great for safety as well as a technology. Fender Audio gave us a sampler, which I can't let you listen to more than like a second because otherwise YouTube will flag this and they won't let me play it. But, but that's a little bit of that. But I will tell you that if you get a chance to go into the dealership, crank the audio, you will be impressed, especially if you like rock and roll and heavy metal. Compressed music sounds good. Uncompressed music sounds good. They've done a really nice job. Uh, looking at the maps, it's Crystal clear, easy to use, very understandable. Of course, I used uh, the Apple CarPlay feature. You can also go into your menus here and you can make them customizable. You can have your clock. You can make whatever it works for you. There's Sirius XM traffic, sports, fuel prices, which is important these days, and stocks. And as you go further along, you can mix that up how you want. There are different connections for your phone. There's also Wi-Fi and a USB connection. Going into your audio system and different sources, you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. You can put in different USBs, Bluetooth audio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Customize your audio sources. That's kind of what people want these days. Real buttons for volume and for controlling, which we do appreciate because that is something that I think people want. Also going into the menu item, you can also go into that camera at any mode. Below this big screen, you've got audio, menu, your map, which you can get to at any time, and that includes your camera, same type of thing, and you can adjust your brightness and settings. Really well done and designed, and when it comes to technology, it earns a nine. Why did it not get a 10? Because this picture needs to be sharper because you don't want to run over anything or anyone. When you're looking at the features of this vehicle, starting off with the steering wheel, it's nice and beefy, and I do appreciate that. I like the Nissan logo. On the right side, you've got your cruise control and some safety features. And on the left side, you've got your audio sources and the ability to change those screens that are right here in front of you. You can pick your speed, your off-road, your auxiliary gauges, and whatever you need. There's two sets of auxiliary gauge pages, your driving information, your fuel economy, your audio, 
a compass, traffic sign if you purchased it, your driver aids, tire pressure, and even more. All going through this rotation of the seven inch screen between these gauges that have red around the perimeter. Really well done. On the left side of the steering wheel, you've got your vent, a tow mode, you've got your safety shield, which you can shut off the noise that it sometimes makes. Also, you've got the ability to make an adjustment for the trailer towing package, which is has hill descent, your cargo bed lamps, which are two LEDs, and of course, some off-road adjustments. The door does not have any memory seating, but neither do any of the other vehicles in this category. There is storage above this screen, and then you've got your nine inch screen and vents three across the front. Below it, your emergency light, you've got your ability to change two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or in neutral, you can switch it to four low. I'm not a big fan of where this start-stop button is here for the ignition. I don't know, it just seems like it should be over here. It just seems like it's too far this way. But maybe it's from when they used to have keys on the column, which they don't have any longer. Further down, you've got your climate control, your heated seats, which are right here, high and low, heated steering wheel, your park assist, and your connections for USB-C, USB and the passenger side heating. You have your standard shift lever, two cup holders. Behind all that, you have wireless charging and then your glove box. In your glove box, you have an additional power source and a pretty deep well. In addition to all this, you have a manual cover on your sunroof. But overall, for features, there is a lot, plus 80 additional accessories you can purchase with your vehicle. And for features, this vehicle earns a 10. When you're looking at the chiseled new front end of the Frontier, it really does make a statement. It is muscular, it is strong, and that is what the truck is all about as well as the competitors. One of the things to note besides this new muscular hood is the new muscular fenders. They're wider and they're more aggressive. Frontier logo is embossed across the top of the grill, flat matte grill, and this great red Nissan logo, which I really like. Further down, you've got another grill. This is all functional and there is skid plates as well as red tow hooks on this vehicle. This is part of the Pro 4X package. Of course, it is a much cleaner, more luxurious look when you're looking at the SV lineup. One other thing to note is the stacking LED headlights. Very impressive looking and it makes a statement. So when you're driving down the road, you know that it's a frontier. Below these muscular fenders, you've got your wheel arches, which are there to protect the paint, because if you're off-roading this thing and you're really using it for how it's meant to be used, you're going to find that this will protect the paint. Down here, you're looking at some hand-cooked tires that are designed for off-road and the black wheels. Of course, there is chrome wheels available on the lower trim levels. You get to pick what you want. Our test vehicle, the Pro 4X, has the 17-inch wheels. Going further back, you've got the new side mirrors, which have a camera underneath that go along with that intelligent around view camera. And you can see the crease lines, very aggressive. And this is also part of that look. You wanna look muscular, you wanna look purposeful, and that they have done. One thing you're gonna notice is the sill has a slight rise. It follows along the body line. You've got your second row mirrors. This is the crew cab. There's also a king cab available. You'll notice these cut lines and there is also optional running boards. There is 80 different options that you can make to personalize this vehicle and make it your own. Further back, we have the short bed on this crew cab. You can get the long bed, but you have to go to a different trim level. So look at your different combinations before you make a decision. You can go with the king cab and the long bed or the crew cab and the short bed. There are some other combinations. We'll list those down below. You've got your gas tank here and as you move further back you've got your Pro 4X decal. I apologize for the dirt but we did take this vehicle off-road before I did the review and I wanted to show you that we really do off-road this vehicle. This new tailgate has a new design to it as well as the Frontier embossed across the back and the Nissan logo in red which I really like. I think they did a really nice job. Tailgate goes down pretty simply and you can use it as anything you need whether you're putting in bikes ATVs. Remember that the towing capacity is not that of a half ton truck, but there's still, if you're going to use this for camping, hunting, fishing, off-roading, this would be a perfect vehicle. In the bed, you will see that you have the spray on bed liner as well as tie downs. There are different tie down connections based on what you need and LED lights too come standard and you can buy additional lights as needed. 
Nissan did not change the wheelbase of this vehicle, and I think that's important because this is the perfect midsize truck size. You're going to find it very comparable to its competitors, which are listed down below in the description, as well as links to those reviews, which go to our website as well, and we have additional contributors that have reviewed the Frontier. Love the fact that this is a working truck. It's a rubber-coated bumper, so you don't have to worry about getting it scratched, but you still have a lot of cool paint color in here. But overall, with the Pro4X, this vehicle's new design earns a 10. When you're looking at the quality of the new Frontier, it's built in the USA. It has a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty and a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain, as well as three years, 36,000-mile roadside assistance. There's no maintenance included. It shouldn't be that expensive to maintain this car as long as you're on top of it, but that's true with any vehicle. Of course, if it's included, that helps lower your overall costs. But when you're looking at the materials of this vehicle, the build quality, how soft the interior features are, it really does a great job. There's a few areas I'd like to see improved. The backup camera should have a crisper picture because it's important to see what's going on behind you. And it would be nice to see power on the passenger side and lumbar. I know they have zero gravity seats. These are okay, but on a long haul, that's a matter of how you're built and you should sit in all these vehicles before you make a decision. When you're looking at the quality of the materials, the brands are using, including the Fender audio system, when it comes to quality, this vehicle earns a nine. When you're looking at cargo, you can either get a five foot or a six foot bed. And that depends on whether you're getting the king cab or the crew cab. Spray on bed liners, about an extra $1,900. And you can also get tie downs for whatever you need. And the thing is, you make this your own. That's the whole thing about the Frontier. What are you doing with that vehicle? Are you gonna make this vehicle into a bed and actually put a tent on top? People are doing that. You can put this a four wheeler in the back. You can put mountain bikes in the back. It all depends on what you're using it for and therefore allows you to make it personalized to yourself. Again, different bed lengths, different cabs. Want to check out the website to find out what combination works for you. Of course, there's different trim levels as well. And this is the Pro 4X. When you're looking at the value of this vehicle, it starts at $27,000 and goes all the way up to $37,000, which is our Pro 4X. Part of that you can also get is the $2,700 Fender audio system, which is spectacular and it's a premium system. There's other features involved in each one. $900 will get you the extra safety systems, which I think should be on every single Frontier because it's nice to have them, whether you use them or not at the moment, you don't know who's going to be driving it, maybe a younger driver. It's good to have it for everyone's safety. And then, of course, you can get that $1,900 spray on bed liner, and there are 80 additional accessories. That's 30 more than the previous generation. When looking at the value of this vehicle compared to the competitors, this is really in that sweet spot. And for value, it earns a nine. Now, when you take all 10 categories together, and we've used this all day long here in Salt Lake City, up into the mountains. We had a lot of fun with this vehicle and it proved how capable it was. And I think Frontier needed to do that. If you're going up against Tacoma, you better put your A game on. And they have done that. Because remember, you've got Ranger and they've come out with their Tremor package. And we've reviewed that. You can check that out up here. You can look at the Colorado and GMC and everybody's fighting for that same space because this is a truck you can put in your garage. This is a truck you can use every day. And this is a truck you can go have fun on the weekend and that's why a lot of people have decided if I'm going to have one vehicle this is going to be the size I want and there's a lot of competition I suggest you drive all of them before you make a final decision each of them has pluses and minuses and you can check that out in our video don't forget to check your insurance rates before you make a decision as well because that's the kind of thing you don't think about until you find out your insurance rates are lower or higher depending upon which choice you find that meets your needs and of course what's available in the lot with this global chip shortage we've covered that as well on our channel so you might want to check that out before you go out to the dealer you might want to wait till they start coming into the dealers which will be late 22. if you're looking at this vehicle down the road and it's a used vehicle maybe five years from now you certainly want to look at this vehicle because it does perform and people that own them keep them for a very long time there are additional opinions and reviews on our website through our contributors at car coach reports also we put up a lot of information on our social media at lauren fix and this vehicle the 2022 nissan frontier pro 4x earns a 90 and that is a great score and you look at the competition they're all right in that sweet spot so look to see which of those features are important to you and which ones aren't if you got value from this video make sure to like and share don't forget to subscribe because we want to make sure that you learn more about this vehicle before you make that final decision and we look forward to seeing you next time